Hello everyone and welcome to Mountain Lake Journal. I'm Tom Helling. This week, a utility executive shares a dirty secret that he says is a major contributor to the global climate crisis. His son, a filmmaker, was shooting a documentary exposing the truth about the electric grid when his father revealed another shocking secret he had been hiding all his life. The reason people aren't talking about the energy issue is because you've got a lot of people trying to protect their legacy systems. I studied the climate change science. This global warming is a hoax. Since the mid-90s, ExxonMobil has spent millions of dollars to spread denial and doubt about man-made climate change. That one unit provides more power than the whole state of Vermont consumes. People get all emotionally hooked around their solutions. Oh, just shut it down. Wait a second. You can't just shut it down because the people in Texas are going to lose their lights. People do not understand the grid. The grid is 100 million appliances all wired up, taking energy from a single gigantic lake of energy. All the power plants dump their energy into this lake, and all the consumers pull it out. The grid is every power plant, every transmission line, every substation, every distribution line, every grid operator, every electric utility, every utility truck, every line worker, power pole, transformer, every meter, and everything that uses electricity in the developed world all together at once. It's the most complex human achievement in the history of our world. Problem is, most of our grid was designed around using dirty fossil fuels converted into electricity at huge remote power plants. And it still is. Fossil fuel generation is still only 33% efficient. That hasn't changed since the time of Thomas Edison in 1882. In some ways, we have the same electrical grid we had in the 1940s or 1950s. Why are we wasting our resources? Why do we have such inefficient energy systems? We have all this infrastructure, and I think there's a better way. When we got down to that iPhone, which has more compute power than the entire country did when we landed on the moon, in your hand, you did that because we figured out how to get better than 99% efficiency in that phone. So we've done it. When we do that with our grid, we've got more power than we could ever consider needing. My dad called me up and said, I have something to tell you. And then my dad said to me that he suffered from gender dysphoria. I'm a woman inside. He asked us all to keep his secret. But as I started to find my bearings as a dad, I started to wonder how my own dad could have hidden this for so long. How could I expect the world to face its truth if I couldn't face mine? <laughs> how you doing? Good to see you. Nice to see you. Watch the boobs. <laughs> he told me to call him Christine. I didn't think I could ever look at him as my dad again. I felt like my whole life was acting. I was just playing a role. It was difficult coming out to your sisters, but it was most difficult coming out to you. But if I had been truthful at age 15, I would have been in a mental institution. They put people in mental institutions when I was 15 for being transgender. If I was truthful at age 20, Pat wouldn't have married me. I wouldn't have had you kids. So it's almost like you can't change. You can't go back and change what happened because there's, there's so much good in what happened. Where do you feel you're at and where do you want to be? My dream would be to spend every waking moment, every day of my life, to be a woman. That's my dream. <laughs> You look beautiful. Thank you. I feel beautiful. 
You ready? I'm ready. And you can watch Denial, the full 90-minute documentary, this coming Monday at 9 p.m. here on Mountain Lake PBS. And it will also be one of the featured films at this year's Snowtown Film Festival in Watertown this weekend. So it's a real pleasure to introduce this film, Denial, tonight. The film has already been screened at festivals and theaters across the country, including Lake Placid's Palace Theater. Christine, her son Derek, and Aaron Wolf, who is one of the producers of the film, met with the audience after the screening. The biggest gift this has given me is being under, to understand what it's like to be different. And you can watch more of that Q&A with Christine and the filmmakers on our website.